Amen. I am as well. Looking forward to what God has for us tonight. I'm going to ask Brother James if you come and give us our uh, opening scriptures for tonight before we invite the presence of the Lord in this place. Are you glad you're still saved on a Sunday night? Are you glad you're still headed to heaven? Amen. Are you still rejoicing over camp meeting this week? Amen. Looking forward to what God has for us tonight. Brother James. Tonight's scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Amen. Man, would you stand with me and let's invite the presence of the Lord to the house of the Lord this night. I'm, I'm just ready to receive whatever he has for me. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the power of Pentecost. Thank you for the anointing of the Lord. Thank you for this Sunday night service. God, I pray as we open up tonight that your power and your presence will go before us. Let every song that's sung, Lord, be done to give nothing but honor and glory unto you. Father, I pray tonight that you'll bless the man of God as he presents the gospel message of Jesus again. Help him tonight, Lord, as he ministers to us. God, touch our, 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 our singing touch the offering. Lord, let everything that's done in this place tonight be done to give praise and honor and glory unto you, our Lord and our Savior. We'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Remain standing. Let's worship together in song tonight. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days No matter what the people say The blood prevails The blood prevails Thank God the blood prevails This is a holy church A sanctified church And it's washed in the blood of the Lamb This is a holy church a sanctified church and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails, 
the blood prevails Just like it did in the olden days No matter what the people say The blood prevails The blood prevails Thank God the blood prevails Well, he's alive, alive, alive forevermore My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore Like it did in the olden days No matter what the people say The blood prevails The blood prevails Thank God the blood prevails This is a holy church A sanctified church And is washed in the blood of the Lamb This is a holy church a sanctified church and is washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. Hallelujah. I love singing of that blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is enough for us today. Hallelujah. It doesn't take anything else but the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He has taken me. Hallelujah. He's cleansed me and he's turned me completely around. Hallelujah. Made me right with him. Hallelujah. And today I can say, look where he's brought me from. Hallelujah. Look where he's brought me from. Look where he's brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he's brought me from. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of sin and shame. He brought me out of sin and shame. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. He brought me from a long way off. He brought me from a long way off. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. I've got a hiding place. I've got a hiding place. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look 
look where he brought me from. He brought me out of sin and shame. He brought me out of sin and shame. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. He brought me from a long way off. He brought me from a long way off. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Well, I've got a hiding place. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Hallelujah. He sure brought me from a long ways off. Hallelujah. He opened up my blinded eyes so that I could see and so I could be in relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And I stand with that testimony today. Hallelujah. That he satisfies my soul. That he's enough for all of us. Hallelujah. And I praise him and I worship him for that tonight. satisfy my soul like you and who on earth could comfort me and love me like you do who could ever be more faithful and true and I will trust in you Lord I will trust in you my God, there is a mountain, who is a king, victorious a warrior and lord of everything, he's my rock, my shelter, he's my very blessed redeemer. life on me cleansing me refreshing me with life abundantly river full of life I'll go where you lead and I will trust in you Lord I will trust in you my God and there is Fountain. Who is a king, victorious a warrior, and lord of everything? He's my rock, my shelter, he's my very own, blessed redeemer, who reigns upon the throne. Fountain, who is a king, victorious warrior, and lord of everything? He's my rock, my shelter, my very own, blessed redeemer, who reigns upon the 
trust in you Lord I will trust in you my God there is a fountain there is a fountain who is a fountain who is a king victorious warrior and Lord of everything my rock my shelter my very own blessed redeemer who reigns upon the throne there is a fountain who is the king victorious warrior and lord of everything my rock, my shelter, my very own, blessed Redeemer, who reigns upon the throne. There is a fountain, who is a king, victorious warrior, and Lord of everything. My shelter, my very own, blessed Redeemer, who reigns upon the fountain. There is a fountain, who is a king, victorious warrior, and Lord of everything. My rock, my shelter, my very own, blessed Redeemer, who reigns upon the throne. There is a fountain, who is the King, victorious warrior and Lord of everything. Shelter, my very own, blessed Redeemer, who reigns upon the throne. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for being all of that to you tonight? Hallelujah. Reminded of that old song that says, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. He satisfies that longing. He satisfies that hunger. He satisfies that that I alluded to this morning when I said if the church that you're attending is dead, you will find something to fill it. And I'm glad tonight that I've got Jesus. Amen. I'm glad tonight that the power of Pentecost is still alive and well. I'm glad tonight that souls are still being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Choir, I know you are wore out from the week, but I believe you got one more song in you tonight. Amen. Come on up. Let's have a good turnout for choir tonight. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll just sing one tonight, maybe, okay? If you'll help us tonight.
It's number 110 if you need it in that red back book. Simply says, Heaven's Jubilee. I'm thankful for that tonight. Amen. I told the choir, so we're going to sing one. I didn't say how many times we was going to sing one. We're going to sing one. Unless I feel it, then we'll sing two. Amen. No, we're going to try to stay with the schedule tonight. One, page number 110, simply says, Heaven's Jubilee. You sing it with us. the praise for that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the choir singing.
Amen. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. Amen. Tonight would be okay with me. If you want to come right now, I'm ready to go. And I pray that you are as well. If you've been in service with us around this place the last couple of days, the last week or so, if you're not ready to go, it's nobody's fault but yours. Amen. Amen. Have you enjoyed the presence of the Lord this week? Amen. What a great time we've had around here this morning and again tonight. And our guest speaker is wired and ready to go. Amen. I felt right at home. I mean, he just reminds me. They told me before he got here, he's like the Energizer Bunny. I thought, well, I'll feel right at home with him. Amen. So even after being going all week long, I feel good. I'm ready. Let's go. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Sunday night service. Those watching via the Internet, we're delighted to have you with us in the house of the Lord as well. And uh, some of them watched every night of camp meeting. They were watching uh, uh, just uh, the, the move of the power of the presence is the Lord and watching tonight and we're so thankful for that good for the folks that are in the house tonight and I trust that you have been blessed already in this service and I'm looking forward to what God has for us this week amen let me recap announcements real quick reminding you that there will be limited activities here because of general assembly uh, we will have church here Wednesday night so if you're not going down to the assembly and I encourage you to do that I just have a, a I just struggle with closing the doors all the way amen so uh, there will be service main service here there'll be no clubs and no classes uh, everybody will be in the main building so I'm encouraging you to drive to the convention center uh, but there will be service here if you want to uh, be at your local church and uh, many of us will be already be down there uh, 12 or so of you are headed to youth camp in the morning so make sure that uh, I went through all that this morning make sure you know where you're supposed to be don't be late I've instructed the van drivers to leave you if you're not here on time amen so uh, they've got to get there on time and make sure they get checked in and so if you have any questions on that see pastor rebecca she can help you with that and uh there'll be uh they'll be, you're gonna have a great time in camp i'm just i'm just ready for you to get there because i know god's going to talk to you this week amen so that'll be going on and then next sunday sunday morning sunday night i make sure you're back in the house of the lord and let's see what god has for us not only tonight but if jesus tarries what he has for us this week at the assembly and also what he has for us next weekend i believe god's got something for us every time we come together in his name amen and i know tonight will be no different ushers would you come tonight give you an opportunity to worship with your giving with your tithes and with your offerings thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord and you're giving this past week in camp meeting uh, I don't have the final report but I will say that it probably was one of the best uh, giving as far as offerings for camp meeting uh, that we've ever had so I appreciate your faithfulness in the Lord and your giving of your offerings and tonight is no different we, we need you to do that again tonight and God loves a cheerful giver and I'm thankful that I can give tonight amen so a give is giving unto the Lord tonight let's ask the Lord just to help us in this place tonight good to have brother Joseph and his wife with us tonight uh, they're no strangers to Ocoee they attend our campus over in Lake County and are with us on Sunday nights brother Joseph would you stand tonight and pray over tonight's tithes and offerings Amen. God bless you as you give tonight.
you enjoyed uh, worshiping the Lord, let's just continue as we worship as Sister Linda comes and then follow that with Sister Maureen. Son 
of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joys we share as we tarry there none other has ever known please sing that chorus with me and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known give God the glory hallelujah hallelujah aren't you thankful he still walks with you tonight amen no matter where you're at no matter what you've been through it's never too late to call out to Jesus amen amen what a joy it is to have with us a very special guest tonight and I am looking forward to his ministry and what God has placed on his heart for this hour for this congregation uh, Dr. Han Yang is no stranger to seeing people saved he's no stranger to the power of the Holy Spirit of God he has he's a husband served has served as a pastor has served as a missionary, a teacher, a college professor, all of those things that you have to do. But I can tell you just a little bit of time that I've spent with him, he loves the Lord. 
And I believe he loves the work of the Lord. And we're delighted to have him and his wife, Esther, if I remember correctly, with us in the house of the Lord tonight. Can we give them a good Okoye Church of God welcome? Thank you for being with us tonight. He is going to come in just a moment and take his liberty here at the pulpit. Uh, let me share a little bit before he does uh, that he will give you an opportunity at the end of service to uh, support the mission work that he does. And so uh, he's made it very clear to me. He says, Pastor, I want it to be separate from your local offering. Uh, there will be no pressure, but he's already ran that through my office and we're on the same page. So when he gets to that part of the service tonight, there's no reason to squirm and say, uh-oh, did Pastor know about that? Yes, uh, I'm aware of that. And uh, he, we will have these famous uh, faith promise cards that we've seen before around here. And uh, so uh, when that part comes, I want the Lord to just touch your heart and to prick your heart. And, and if they, you would like to respond, whether it be a one-time thing or a faith promise, whatever, he'll talk about that later tonight. More importantly, I want to just hear what the word of the Lord has for us. Amen. Yes. And uh, he's asked that we uh, allow two videos to play just before he comes. I believe collectively they're about five minutes in length. And then following that, he will come and take his liberty. I believe he'll introduce his wife, things of that nature. One more time, can we make them feel welcome to the Okoe Church of God? Thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. We're seeing the explosion of God's power like the underground church in China is experiencing. And in the last 60 years, China's communist government has done its best to wipe Christianity off the map. What you are about to see is some of the rarest footage on the planet. In this church, the people wake up at 4.30 to come together for two hours to pray and worship. They do this every day. This church meets in the only place they are safe, a cave. This church meets on a farm, far away from prying eyes. Here's an example of an underground church outreach. The people sitting are Christians. The people who are standing are not. This particular preacher was once crippled, but was healed when someone prayed for her. She now preaches the good news of Jesus to anyone who will listen. In this particular meeting, over 1,000 people became Christians. Here Christians cast out demons from an 18-year-old girl. She's now a preacher. In Shanghai alone, there are over 3,000 house churches, just like this one. One thing Dennis pointed out to me was that most of the underground churches in China are actually led by young people. These kids have all come out of the communist system, and they want nothing to do with it. They only want to spread the love of Jesus to everybody they meet. This is a music school. Well, that's the cover anyway. It's really a training school for students who want to be pastors. The government thinks they're simply learning to play instruments. One thing I quickly realized about the Chinese church is that it's a lot different from the American one. For one thing, they think a four-hour sermon is short. In this church service, it's 120 degrees inside the building. The people meet for 12 hours straight. Dennis told me one story about a time he went to a very remote village in China to preach. He was led into a large room where the people were packed so closely together that he had his back to the wall and could reach out and touch the row in front of him. Everyone stood. There was no room to sit. He asked how long he should preach for, and they told him from 8.30 to 7 at night. Then they asked him, if it wasn't too much trouble, could you come back tomorrow and preach from 8.30 to 7 again? 
and then, very sheepishly, they asked again, If you'd be so kind, could you come back the day after that and preach from 8.30 to 7? He asked how often he should take breaks, and they told him not to stop. The people will wait. Then he asked them what he should preach on. Everything, they replied, from Genesis to Revelation. And then it dawned on him, these people had no Bibles. Put your hand together and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Remind me of 29 years ago when I first received my Bible. 29 years ago at the age of 21. Now you know how old I am, you know. <laughs> 50 years old, you know. That was the first time I ever saw a Bible. I mean, received the Bible of my own through two church of God missionaries from Lee College. Cleverland, Tennessee. We didn't know how to pronounce Cleveland. We pronounced it, we pronounced it as Cleverland. <laughs> Praise God. And this is exactly what my wife and their team do because I have been thrown in jail, tormented and tortured, couldn't go back for five years. But I want you to hear a testimony. I'll tell you detail. I want you to hear a testimony and, uh, uh, from my wife, who is my childhood sweetheart, married 29 years ago. Praise God. Amen. That's why Esther come, ordained minister of the church of God and licensed counselor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. It, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is wonderful to be here with all of you. And it is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we gather together in the name of Jesus, and we can for sure feel the presence of the Almighty. Amen. And today, before I share a brief testimony, I would love to sing a worship song together with all of you in Chinese. Okay. Of course, anyone who knows Chinese, you are more than welcome to sing with me. And even if you don't know Chinese, you are still welcome to sing it with me, with your hand, with your heart, and also with your spirit. And the title of this song is that God is here. And the meaning of the song is that the presence of the Lord is here. The word of God is here. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. And here is a different world. Look how good and beautiful when brothers dwell together in unity. It's like the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Because love is here. Peace is here. Light is here. And life is here. Yeah. All the bestowed blessings of Jehovah are here. And if you want to have it, it is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It is a song that is extremely popular among the house churches in China. And so this song later have sung by 
um, by literally millions of house churches in China. And so millions of people, and they sing this song. We hear this song, everyone knows about this song. And why? Because this is the gospel song. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's sing it together. I will sing in Chinese, but for sure you can sing it with me. Let's stand up and put your hand together. Worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Zali 爱在这里和平在这里光明在这里生命在这里耶和华说明定的父都在这里你若想要得到他在耶稣基督里你若想要得到他在耶稣基督里 Hallelujah Hallelujah Praise our Lord Hallelujah Hallelujah It is in our Lord Jesus Christ that we can have love because God is love It is in our Lord Jesus Christ that we can have peace because He is the Prince of Peace It is in our Lord Jesus Christ we can have light because he is the light of man and he is the light of this world and therefore let our light let your light so shine before men so others can see your good deeds and give honor and glory to our father above oh, yeah. it is also in our lord jesus christ uh, that we can have life because jesus said i am the way the truth and life therefore not only in our lord jesus christ we can have a good abundant life here and now but i am also looking forward to the everlasting blessed life there and then where we can walk or enter into the gate of pearl and walk on the streets of gold and live in the heavenly mansion and watch the crystal sea and standing in from the glory of the almighty hallelujah and because the blessed hope that we have in our lord jesus christ and therefore we can endure anything that is set before us and anything in this world and we can conquer it in the name of jesus because jesus already we become the victor of our life he already conquered everything conquered death and everything in this world amen. amen and because what we have in our lord jesus christ and therefore and we take nothing for granted we know it is our lord is precious and his blood is precious and his love is not cheap it is free for you is free for me but it's not cheap amen because it costs his life and so because this blessing that we have in our lord jesus christ and therefore ever since god saved me from atheist from atheism from uh, evolution darwin's evolution theory and from coming to china i had the greatest burden to pray for my family back in china to get saved and we did not have a chance to go until later on in 1998 and the first time we went back to china these are a few little words of my own sister one day she was talking to me she said to me she said do you still remember the first time you all came back to china we have not seen you guys for over 10 years but all you are talked about is this jesus 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 and she said back in our mind we were wondering 
who is this Jesus? Is this Jesus better than your own family and friends? Or is this Jesus better, closer to you than your own flesh and blood? Exactly who is this Jesus? You guys could not stop talking about him. And she said at that time we did not quite understand until later when we receive Jesus as our Lord, as our Savior and Master, then we begin to understand indeed he is better than our own family and friends and he is closer to us than our own flesh and blood. And so that's what we do. And we just go back and evangelize wherever we go, just share the great gospel uh, and share the love and compassion of the Lord. And so in my family back in China, so right now all of them get saved, but in my family, my mother was the first one after I shared with the family. She was the first one came to the Lord. But my father was one of the most stubborn people. And he was a communist official most uh, most most time of his life, and he felt okay. This Jesus, this is religious. Okay, is good for my wife, and all my children. Just don't talk to me about it. He said, if I accept this Jesus, how could I stand in front of the party meeting? And because uh, as a communist party member and a leader, they've been condemning. Uh, con condemning Jesus, condemning religion since the beginning. So this, he feels so ashamed. He feels so ashamed of the gospel. And But we did not give up. We just persisted and shared the gospel with him. And he just kept on refusing it until one day. We had a great family reunion. It was during this great family reunion at this time, I approached my father again. At this time, I just stopped beating around the bush. <laughs> I talked to my father straight forward, face to face. And I said to my father, Father, you know that we love you very, very much. Of course, we know that you love us very, very much. I have no doubt about the love between us. I can see it make you the happiest person on the entire earth. It's when all your children, when all your grandchildren are gathered around you. You could not stop smiling from ear to ear. Every time we go back to America, it literally brings tears to your eyes because you want to be with us all the time. But I have to tell you the honest truth. That is, Father, how long can you live in this world? Maybe 70 years old, maybe 80 years old, or at most over 100 years old. One day, you are going to die. One day, I am going to die. Doesn't matter how long I am going to live in this world. We are going to die. Who can escape death? Nobody. But there is a great difference because all of us, my mother and all your children, all of us, because we believe in Jesus, after death, we are going to go to heaven. Yeah. You don't believe in Jesus, you are going to go to hell. You want to be the happiest person on the entire earth? And you want to be with us all the time? By that time, you cannot see us anymore, forever. Even if we want to see you, it'll be impossible. Even if you want to see us, it'll be impossible because there is a great gap between heaven and hell, and nobody can cross. And so that got his attention. And he got to think about it very, very seriously. So one month after that encounter, we received the phone call from China. My sister told me on the phone, oh, you know, our father just received Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. As his Lord, Master, and Savior. 
And ever since he received Jesus as his master and Lord and Savior, and his life was completely different. And the joy of the Lord just filled his heart. And every time we went back to visit him, and I can see the joy and the love of God and in his heart. And he was that he was not that stubborn or proud anymore. And so his life completely transformed. A long story short. Three years after my father got saved, suddenly one day, my father had a massive brain hemorrhage. So about half a month later, my father passed away. So we went back to China and conducted a Christian ceremony and also a traditional Chinese funeral for my father. And it's been Chinese culture and Chinese tradition for 5,000 years. If you have seen a Chinese over here, or you have visited a Chinese grocery store, and there is always in one section, it's a must. Doesn't matter, you know, where, you know, whether Chinese in China or Chinese in America, I always have one section. It's called the paper money for the dead. Or Ohio banknote. They even over here in Atlanta, Chinatown, maybe also over here in Orlando. And they might have a bigger section with this advanced American printing. $10,000 hell bank note. And so it's been Chinese culture and tradition during the traditional Chinese funeral. And uh, during the visitation, people will bring this paper money for the dead and burn in front of the coffin. Why will people do such a thing? And uh, so, you know, in a market funeral, what do you do? You bring flowers, right? And you go to the graveside, you change the flower to make it fresh. And so, and, uh, and it's just very, very different. Because behind every behavior, there is a belief system. Why the Chinese do such a thing? Because the Chinese believe for 5,000. And this engraved into the Chinese bones. And people believe when you die, you will go to hell straight. There is no escape about it. And people believe in hell, there will be 18 layers. Depends how you behave in this world. If you have been a very good person, you will be sentenced to the upper layer of hell. If you have been a very wicked person, you will be sentenced to the bottom layer of hell. People believe in the bottom layer of hell, there will be a huge hot boiling oil pot. You'll be deep fried like the Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and so therefore, when people pass away, and they will burn this paper money for the dead in front of the coffin or the gravesite. And they believe once the paper money for the dead it was burned, your loved ones on the other side can receive this money and use this money to bribe the devils and demons in hell to lessen your torments. So that's the reality. And only boys can burn, burn the paper money for the dead. That's why all the Chinese want to all, they all not only carry out their name, but so they can have the next lineage to burn the paper money for the dead, for their ancestors. And so it's a very serious problem. This kind of belief is engraved in Chinese souls. And so therefore, during our father's funeral, we began to share the gospel with the people who came to visit and to do their visitations. And I said, oh, thank you for coming. I see you even brought the paper money for the dead. We know. And uh, the paper money for the dead is absolutely good for the dead. It is good for the dead. And, but we want to let you know one thing. And our father have no need for it anymore. Because he have gone to a much better place called heaven. In heaven, there is no torture. There is no torment. And there is no need to bribe nobody. But in heaven, there is peace. There is joy. There is the glory of the Almighty. Would you like to go to heaven after you die? But how? 
We have never heard such a thing. How can anybody be good enough to climb up to heaven? We said, oh, we know by our own effort, nobody is good enough to climb up to heaven. We know there is absolutely no way on earth unless God make a way for us from heaven. God love you so much, so he made a way down from heaven down to earth. He himself became human beings like us to show us the way. And not only he came down from heaven to show us the way, but he died on the cross. And he paid your debt with his blood. And he suffered, you don't have to suffer anymore. And he paid your debt in hell with his own blood so that you can be free. And not only he was uh, died on the cross and went to the grave, but also he, third days later, he, uh, he was resurrected from the grave and then returned back where he came from and to prepare rooms for you. If you can trust and believe and follow this God whose name is called Jesus Christ, you can be like uh, my father after you die. Hey, you don't have to go to hell anymore. You can be in heaven with God. Would you like to believe and follow this God? Right there around coffin, we have 18 people came to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is Evangelism 101. That means who's, whomsoever you love the most, you want to share the gospel with them the most. And if you love your daughter, and if you love your son, if you love your parents, and if you love your brothers and sisters, or your cousins, uncles, whosoever, okay? Doesn't matter what kind of shape they came, they, they came from. Whether they, are, uh, where they, whether they are skinny or, or big, uh, whether they, uh, you know, doesn't matter. What kind of, whatever, it doesn't matter where they came from. Whether they either bird house or uh, jail house, it doesn't matter, okay? If you love them, you share the love of God to them. Amen. If you love them, you want to them to end up in a good place, not in a place that full of torment. Right or not? So therefore, there is a great commission for all of us over here. Okay? If you love and the people that you love most around you, you want to in all the means necessary, drag them out of hell and deliver them into the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And in China alone, the population is 1.4 billion people. Among these 1.4 billion people, at least 900 million, that is three times of U.S. population, have never heard the gospel, have never seen a copy of the word of God. And the Bible even today is still a forbidden book. And it's a forbidden and illegal book to be sold in any bookstores. In China, they have Christian bookstores, but even Christian bookstore is not allowed to sell the Bible. You can sell some Christian books or literatures, but not the Bible itself. It's illegal. And so therefore, on the DVD, you saw the young people, and the first time when they, they, they because they are really Christians, that's in the house church. And this is exactly the same copy of the Bible. And so when the Bible was delivered through the smuggling group to China, you know, that's one of the things we do, smuggle, yeah, holy smugglers, to deliver the Bible to, you know, to China. So when it arrived there, the first time they saw, they just rushed into it. Amen. So you are welcome to go with me, okay? Anyone who is warm and breathing, I'm willing to take you. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. And so people, people are so thirsty, hungry for the word of God. And because the word of God is the bread of life and it is the living water. And so they are so hungry 
and for the word of God and so hungry for the presence of the Lord. And so that's one of the things that we do is to smuggle Bibles. And that's one of the things that we can do in this country to pray for the Chinese and that they will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord. And so their souls can be delivered and from the gate of hell to the presence of Almighty God. And together, hallelujah, together, and we can deliver people and from the darkness of this world into the marvelous light of Jesus. May the Lord greatly bless you. And may the Lord greatly use you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hand together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift up the name of Jesus. 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 In glory, in majesty, in power, in authority, and in praises. 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 Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noon time, and praise him even when the sun goes down. Why? Simply one reason. Psalm 22, verse 3. One reason and one key. For the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So what is the P.O. box of Jesus? Your heart of praises. Your heart of praises is the P.O. box of Jesus. Amen. When our praises go up, his presence comes down. When our prayer go up, his power comes down. And in his presence, is there's a fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's what Nehemiah 18 says. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. I want to give you a little bit of my testimony highlight. And I want to invite you for the reading of God's word in John chapter 1. Turn with me to John chapter 1 because we talk about nothing but the word, the word, the word. Just like in the first verse. Word, word, word. Always the word. And we saw the verse earlier in this, uh, you know, uh, in our song, in the song that they overcame the devil, the, the, the brother, they overcame the devil, Revelation 12, 11. How? By the blood of the Lamb. Not ashamed of the blood of the Lamb. Amen? And by the word of their testimonies, not being afraid to die themselves. Sometimes we preachers in America quote only half verse. For some reason, I don't know why. Check out Revelation 12, 11. I have not heard one preacher quote the whole verse. For some reason. Revelation 12, 11 says, They overcame the brethren, they overcame him, the small age. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimonies, not loving their life so much as to shrink back from death itself. Chinese translation says, Not even afraid to die themselves. Praise God. And they actually have a talk, this is about a blood baptism. They talk about a fire baptism. Before we start reading John chapter 1, let me give it to you before I forget, Pastor. First and foremost, thank you, Pastor, first, for the privilege. Amen. Praise God. Because of the great connection I have with a dear, special friend, and I consider as a spiritual mentor, Dr. Dillard. I call him Dr. Dillard. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Rob Dillard has been supporting my ministry many, many years. Here. Went to China with me, smuggled Bible, underground teaching. 4.30 a.m. he was preaching in an underground church. And then by another hour or two, he was in another underground Bible school. It's just awesome, you know. Listen, they talk about five baptisms before we read John chapter 1. First is word baptism. Word baptism, what does it mean? It means Romans 10 17 for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ amen that's why in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word the word and this word was made flesh amen don't be don't be oblivious to the obvious amen don't ever become oblivious the brother sister in China they memorized the Bible and in our underground Bible schools many of them had to memorize the gospel of John and the book of Romans before they come to even apply not upon graduation as part of their application man it's called a word baptism. They memorize the word. They memorize the word. They internalize the word. They personalize the word. They visualize the word. They vitalize the word. They verbalize the word. They verbalize the word. They virtualize the word. They actualize the word. And they realize the word. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Personalize, verbalize, actualize, and you will realize. Amen. The word, the word, the word. Dao, dao, dao. D-A-O, D-A-O, D-A-O. That's the Chinese sound for the word. Amen. Second baptism. Besides word baptism, Romans 10, 17. Second baptism is what we know. Water baptism. Because there is no meaning to go jump into the water. 
if you have not been convicted in the heart by the power and of the word of God because we are convicted from the inside we want to do a manifestation on the outside praise God and we know that one you know third one is water baptism spirit of baptism because John baptizes you by, with the water but he who comes out to him shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit so spirit of baptism and the purpose of spirit baptism, we know, is to be endued with dunamis, 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 dynamite power to become effective witness servants for Jesus, living the victorious holy life, but also witness for Jesus. And the fourth baptism is that not only shall he baptize you with the Holy Spirit, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fuego, fire, fire baptism. So word baptism, water baptism, spirit baptism, now fire baptism. What does it mean, fire baptism? Fire purifies. Fire unifies. And a true fire multiplies. Amen. So my prayer for you is, let the fire fall upon you. Let the fire burn inside of you. And let the fire spread through you. Hallelujah. Let the fire fall. Let the fire burn. Let the fire spread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Let the fire burn in you. Let the fire fall on you. Let the fire spread through you. If that fire has five functions, let me tell you that fire energizes, fire intensifies. That's why you cannot shout fire, fire in a public place where there is no fire. Put you in jail. Amen. Praise God. You know, fire becomes intense and makes everything taste. Fire energizes, fire intensifies, fire purifies, fire unifies. Fire unifies. Amen. The greatest way to unify the American church is to have some fire of persecution. Some persecution fire will unify the church more quickly than another prayer meetings. Because we realize it's not, not about denominationalism, it's about the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world. And then and only then shall the end come. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen. And then the fire of, uh, and of course, true fire purifies, unifies, and multiplies. Multiply, multiply, multiply. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you this. And the, and the final one. And the, what does it mean in the Chinese underground churches? Suffering and persecution fire. Suffering and a sacrifice. Including arrests, beaten, tortured like me, and in jail. But that's not the, not the heaviest price. The heaviest price Greater love have no one than this, that you lay down your life for your friend. What does this baptism mean? Blood. Blood baptism. That's the fifth type of blood baptism. They base that one on Revelation 12, 11. That they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb of God, and they are willing to shed blood for the Lamb of God also. Amen. By the blood. So that means what? Martyrdom. The ultimate gift you can give is the giving of your life. Because true love and death always go together. For our love is as strong as death itself. Solomon says, for our love is as strong as death itself. Wow, praise God. So those are the five types of baptism that we preach and teach in the underground church. Just like in the book of Acts. Just in, like in the book of Revelations. Word of baptism, water baptism, spirit of baptism, fire baptism, and finally blood baptism which means giving and one more verse revelation 2 10 this is their favorite verse in the underground church revelation 2 10 it says do not be afraid fear not fear not fear not for the, for some of you even though some of you will be thrown in jail to be tempted of the devil for 10 days but be ye faithful unto what death death not loving their life so much as to shrink back from death itself. Revelation 12, 11, just like Revelation 2, 10. Last year long, over 7,500 preachers were thrown in jail. Many are still in prisons. Over 7,500. 7, 0, 0. And my province has been the worst because the revival is the brightest. So half of the 7,000 some preachers put in jail last year long came from Henan province. Many, 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 you know. But I want to tell you this. You can come and see the display. I will show you. I even wrote a book about 15 of the most marvelous pastors who have spent more than 20 years in prison. Some even died as martyrs. Get a copy of it. I'll sign it for you. Sowing in tears, reaping with joy. Sowing with tears, reaping with joy. So that's the kind of a five type of baptism that they teach. Uh, not just water and baptism of the spirit. But also with fire, also with blood, death. 
that willing if I come and get a copy of this I made a copy for you you can come and get if we run out we can make some more copy it's a martyr's hymn they wrote they sing and they weep if I have DVD you see them singing and weeping much better quality than this just to pull out of YouTube as you know I have those professionally made on the ground copy called to be a martyr for Jesus and Jesus in China one hour DVDs and even a whole set of four hour DVDs you can come and check out that's your theme song and you can get original copy they, 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 they uh, faxed to me in their original before it was typed and everything to be a martyr for Jesus and they said you are not a, if you are not willing to be a martyr to die for Jesus you have not even started living for him yet my God, it's tremendous. Here is what it says in John chapter 1. It said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For the same was in the beginning with God. It says, all things were made by Him, all with Him, and nothing without Him. I like that verse, amen? All with Him, and there is nothing without Him. It said, in Him, verse 4 says, was life. And this life was the light of man. The light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot extinguish it. I like this verse. It says, darkness cannot extinguish it. And there was a man sent from God, verse 6 says, who came from the Lord, whose name was John. This man, I hope also this man, I come for the same purpose. To, this man came for a witness, to bear witness to the light. And the true light. He says, he was not the light, but I was sent to bear witness to the, to the light. The true light, which gives light to every man, come, cometh into the world. In verse 10, is no longer John the Baptist. It's Jesus the Savior. He said, he was in the world. And the world was made by him, yet the world knew him not. Worse, even worse. Verse 11, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Look at Israel. 8 million Jews, how many Christians? Only 15,000. My wife and I just came back from ministering in Israel. Only 15,000 Christians among 8 million Jews. Even that is the highest figure ever. The highest figure ever. Can you imagine? And persecution also for them. So he came unto his own, and his own still received him not. But as many are receiving, you will hear my testimony, the word B-U-T. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was the diehard communist for 20 years and a secretary of the Communist Party for five years. But today I'm saved, sanctified, and filled by the Holy Spirit. I'm a preacher, a Pentecostal preacher of the Church of God for nearly 30 years now. Praise God. Nearly 29 years now. Since I got my first Bible, I began to preach. I didn't even know what a theology was, you know, before I met the Dirksons and gave me an invitation to come to Cleverland, Tennessee. Amen. Cleverland, you know. Listen to this. And, and my testimony was this. It says in the last verse, verse 14. For the word was made flesh. And moved into the neighborhood. Amen. I like that translation. The word became flesh and moved into our neighborhood. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Also in verse 17, look at this, Pastor. In verse 17, for the law was given through Moses, but the grace and the truth came through the only begotten of the Father, whose name is clearly Jesus Christ the Lord. I come here to share with you a little word of encouragement, of power, of passion, of purpose, of hope and peace from the Prince of Peace. Because I never heard of the gospel for the first 20 years. My wife was even later, one year later. Because when I received Jesus, I began to share with my girlfriend then, who only condemned me for being a superstitious man. A man of crazy superstition you know and yeah yeah and I'm telling you and my father when I started to share with him I was knocked out I was almost passed out with a big old stick on my from behind my, my, my head you know but today guess what happens he was the secretary of the community party he was the leader of the community party I was a youth secretary five years but he was like a big communist official but we kept sharing with him never give up on him pray for him love him and give him Bible he said he was going to throw away the Bible burn the Bible as bathroom tissues use it as bathroom tissues and burn the Bible to start a fire 
He said, don't give me anymore. But we kept on giving him Bible, loving him, along with gifts and love him. But March 99, as I was went to see him, tears came down from his eyes. He got the Bible out. He said, I did not burn the Bible or use it as bathroom tissues. You know, country people use any book they could get, you know, as bathroom tissue, you know. It's from his outhouse, you know what I mean? Amen. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you the truth. He, he, with tears in his eyes, he said, I have been reading this Bible. I want to be a follower of this Jesus. Yes! like you hallelujah and he came to Jesus Christ and all 29 members of my family got saved and six of them are preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ praise the Lord praise the Lord six preachers hallelujah and my wife said even double that my wife said double that in preachers in the state salvation and, and two of her nephews are preacher of the gospel also Never really exist. That's awesome. One of her nephews just read the Bible upon high school graduation. She gave a copy. In 10 days, he devoured the Bible. In 10 days, he finished reading the Bible and decided to be a Christian and now preaching the gospel. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And 1983 was a turning point. 20 years old. Born October 80, I mean 63. By 83, 20 years old. Third year in college. English major. I was handpicked to be a future interpreter for the communist leaders, officials. As I was studying English and American books, I came across references to the Bible. Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. John Banyan's Pilgrim Progress. John Milton's Paradise Lost. And William Shakespeare's The Jew of Malta. Great American writer Nathaniel Hawthorne's A Scarlet Letter. Many other writings we had to read as English major in China. And listen, the more I studied all these books, the more I was fascinated, but also confused because they were quoting a book called the Bible I had never even heard of. So I began to look for Bible. I thought I could buy one or borrow one or whatever it was the most convenient, most economical for me, you know. <laughs> Hungry all the time. Didn't have enough uh, money to buy a pack of ramen noodles most of the time. Struggling, struggling, struggling. We lived on, we lived on less than $20 a month ramen noodle most of the time for me to break an egg to put in the noodle while it was boiling was a major uh, upgrade <laughs> yeah a major upgrade man you know what i mean but listen to this and uh, and uh, yeah we grew up in poverty and starvation and hunger mao under communist leader mao we will not see meat in one meal for two years eating elm tree box and willow tree leaves and even digging out the grass roots millions of people starved to death and cannibalism that's when we were growing up in the 60s, you know. But listen to this. When I heard about the Bible, I wanted to borrow or buy, but I was shocked to go to a library bookstore. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody knew what it was then, 1983, 31 years ago. I can guarantee you go now, most of them still don't know what it is. You know, it's just unbelievable. Just two weeks ago, I was in Congo. I got into the Chinese compound of the workers because there were thousands of Chinese working in Africa. Guess what? I shared with them about Jesus. I talked to them about Jesus. They thought Jesus was some kind of an animal on the zodiac of the Chinese restaurant. You know, the rabbit and red and dog. And they thought he was going to lucky charm to bring some fortune for their copper business. You know, <laughs> I'm serious. And they didn't mean offense. They just pure ignorance. Ignorant, you know, but then I share with them out of my life, my testimony. Finally, understood who this Jesus is, and several came to the Lord Jesus Christ right there and then in Congo among the Chinese. Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> Praise God. And this just happened a little over a week ago, less than two weeks ago. I was preaching all over Congo and the conventions and Zambia. Praise God, amen. Hey, listen, and then in just what in just about a month, your brother in law, Mark Smith. Pastor Kenneth Mark Smith, right, from Okeechobee Church of God, is going with me to the largest Muslim nation to teach, preach, and evangelize. Pastor Smith, and going September 1, pray for Farhan and another pastor. And this other pastor also was in jail with me in China, from Atlanta. But of course, both of us were banned from China. Both of us, this pastor from Atlanta, me, we were put in jail for preaching the gospel November 14, 2009. Then I was put in jail again three days, caged like a dog and a monkey, uh, 19, uh, 2010, a few months after that, January, uh, you know, 2010. But listen to this. I consider it an honor to have paid a little price for Jesus Christ because I considered it a joy and an honor. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, my Lord, because it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. More persecution, more power. Amen. More, the devil is a dumb devil. Amen. I want to tell you, he's a dumb devil, you know. Amen. Praise God. 
I follow the one verse from the Bible in looking at everything. And I want you to follow it also. Genesis 50, 20. Very easy to remember. 5, 0, 2, 0. The devil always mean it for evil, but God. But God. But God always mean it for good. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes the devil will use the brother to do evil, but God always means it for good, right? Yeah. Joseph, amen. But long story short, I had to go to the professors. They did not know what the Bible was. And I had to finally go to my general secretary of the Communist Party, my boss. I was the junior secretary of the Youth Communist League, 1979 to 1983. Never ever heard the gospel of Jesus even once. Just like my wife told you, 900 million. Can you imagine that kind of figure? 900 plus six more zeros. I've never to this day, July 27, 2014, heard of the gospel even once. May I tell you this? Yeah. And may I tell you this? I finally went to my boss. Because he said, they said, they told me he was the only one who could help me if he wanted to. And I pleaded with him. But when I mentioned my need for the Bible, he got very angry with me and kicked me out of his office. He said, you are crazy. The Bible is considered in China as an opium of the people. Opium like cocaine or marijuana. You know, said it will pollute you, poison you. Get out of here. Kick me out of your time. But I persisted to go ask him and I beg him for favor like the persistent widow from the Bible. I would not give up also because I was very serious in study and I could not study English and American books without knowing what the authors were talking about because they were quoting the Bible left and right. Finally, I even took my textbook and I showed him. And even one book by Karl Marx, founder of communism, Marxism, he even quoted the Bible. I mean, can you imagine that? Finally, my, my boss man was convinced that I was sincere, that I was really in need of it and not making up a story to cheat him out of a Bible, you know what I mean? And approved me to get a Bible where? Well, from the banned book section with his special permission, not regular bookshelves. Banned book section, which was the basement of the university library where I found a copy after dusting cleaning with his permit in the section called Western Pornographic Literature. I found a copy of the Bible, not like this Chinese fire Bible that I was showing the pastor, full of study Bible, but King James English. Half of which I did not even understand then because I was very poor in English and the King James Bible is 400 years old, in case you don't know. <laughs> Translated 1611 from the original language. I got a 400 year edition a few years ago while preaching in New York, 2011, from 1611 to 2011, I got a copy because our former general of zero was the general director of the American Bible League, and through him I got the special 400 year edition of the King James Bible. Praise God for the Word of God. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. For the power, the power, the power of the Word of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, because it is the dunamis, the power. Amen. Yeah. And you shall receive this do not miss when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall become witnesses for Jesus. The word of witness, maturias. Maturias come from the word martyrdom. It doesn't just mean a bunch of weak Jehovah witnesses. It means willing to die for Jesus. We're talking about uh, blood baptism. Blood baptism. Even in the most Pentecostal verse, it implies paying the highest price. X 1 8. Ye shall receive dunamis when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall become unto me martyrs, martyrs in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, even unto the end of the world. I'll give you one more example. Hebrews 12 1. More clear. Hebrews 12 1, the same word, martyrs, martyrs. It says, Now therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of martyrs, martyrs, because the verses before that is a list of martyrs from the last chapter, Hebrews 11, verses 34 to 38. You see how terrible the martyrs were. Right. We know why they were martyrs, but how brutal. Right. So now that makes it clear that the word martyrs. Doesn't mean witness, but more than meaning witnesses, it means martyrs. Be ye faithful unto sound like martyrs to me, and I will give you the crown of life. Because the symbol of the cross is calling us to bid farewell to this world and bid us to follow Him, even if it costs our lives. Deny ourselves. And it, you know, while I was singing that song the other day, you know, uh, come and die, come and die. But the master said, ding dong, ding dong, granny, you know, dinner bell, whatever. No, the Spirit of God told me, stop singing like that. Sounds silly to me, you know. 
Sounds, uh, uh, Mickey Mouse from Orlando. That's what it is, you know? Since I'm in Orlando, you know? Don't play with me, the Mickey Mouse young, you know? Amen. Not come and die. Come and die. Not yet. Not yet. Come and die. Come and die. But the master says, come and die. That's what he told me. When I bid you to come and follow me, I bid you to come and die with me. Die unto your greed. Die unto your pride. Die unto your complaints. Die unto your critical spirit. Die unto your murmuring. Die unto your egotism. Die unto your envy. Die unto your anger. Die unto your selfishness. Die unto your self righteousness. So that you can become alive, alive, and alive, like the song says, unto Jesus. Yes. Wow, it's powerful. Just like John 3 30, I must decrease so that Jesus Christ can increase. Why am I praise God? Listen to this. As a result, you know, their favorite song is called The Life Principle, is John 12 24. John 12 24, it says, Our life like a seed, said, Unless that a grain of wheat, unless a grain of wheat drops to the ground, and what? D I E. It will remain only one grain. But if it does, it produces many folds. Yes. You know, one wheat grow how many? One corn grow how many years? Hundreds of times more. Even more than wheat, even more than sorghum is the principle of the corn. It is unbelievable, you know, unless, unless, and until, unless and until. It's a powerful, it's a life principle. And, and my life verse, before I forget, let me tell you my life verse, Acts 20, 24. This is my life verse, Pastor Autumn, is Acts 20, 24, that I count my life as nothing dear unto me if only I can run the race with joy and finish the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's my life verse, Acts 20, 24. Count my life as nothing near unto me. And what's going to be on my tombstone? One verse. Philippians 121. Our daughters, my daughter know that. They will be putting it there. Philippians 121. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Meanwhile, the Lord allow you to live. Live with godliness. Live with contentment. Because godliness with contentment is not only gain, it's great gain for Timothy 6.6. 6. Amen? Amen? Long story short. When I got the Bible as Western porno, I was given a personal favor. Not the normal borrow procedure. And I had no time to waste because it gave me favor on only two weeks. Nobody had even heard of a Bible in the whole university of 30,000 people. You know, I never heard of one Christian in my life until that time. And in two weeks, I read the Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Not only did I do that, the Spirit of God jumped upon me, hallelujah, and the first place liberated me from the dungeon of Darwinism because for 20 years I had to put my hand at the bottom of my hips and like the community told us, this was to feel the monkey tail from behind. Amen? So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkey jumping on the bed. Amen? Praise God. Amen? I realized I was not a monkey by evolution. We are not a monkey by evolution. We are children of the Lord by His wonderful creation. Because the first person told me that and liberated me, revolutionized me, said, let us make man in our image. And in his likeness, he made us male and a female. He made us, made us to honor him, serve him, love him, magnify him, because our life is a gift from him. Yeah. Praise God. It touched me so deeply. It was joy unspeakable and full of glory. I began to feel peace because I always had trouble with this monkey business. Amen. Yeah. 20 years I struggled with the monkey business. Amen. Because even discipline, I was even punished when I tried to challenge this monkey business when I was in a kindergarten elementary school. Yeah, man, praise God. And when I read about Jesus, I began to cry. I began to cry without even knowing why. I was just overwhelmed, I guess. Now I know it was his love, his compassion. I began to cry. And I began to copy the Bible because I realized by the end of the second week, in no time, I had to turn it in. And they would take it out. And indeed, they came and got the Bible from me exactly at the end of the second week. But guess what happened? The Holy Spirit touched me. Copy, copy, copy. There is one young lady I want to show you. She was only 10 years old. She was raised from the dead. There are a lot of people raised from the dead in China. And a whole village come to Christ. There are 1,000 or 3,000. She was one of them. Her village of 3,000 old Christians raised from the dead. Hospital already turned her off because hospital don't deal with the dead, you know. But the ladies began to pray for her in the, in the, in the house. And her mother couldn't hold her any longer, crying, holding. Suddenly dropped her and she rose up. And she said, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. And at age of 10, next year, later, one year later, God told her to stay. Don't go to school. Copy the Bible twice. And she did. And today she is one of the most powerful preachers and has led thousands of people to Jesus Christ. And her father is in prison for preaching the gospel. You come and see the pictures. 
get some DVD and see and read one of the books, Sewing in Tears. And my entire life and testimony. You know, praise God. Listen to this. Long story short, even though my Bible was taken away from me, yet by the time they took it away from me at the end of the second week, Pastor Thomas, I already secretly cover, copied from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21, where every touch my heart, give me hope, give me joy, give me peace like I never knew in 20 years. I copied about 300 pages during the last two days or so. My Bible was finally taken away. The community could take away the Bible from my hand. But no demon, no devil could take away the Bible, the Word of God from my heart. Hallelujah. Nobody could take away the Word of God from my heart, even though they could destroy it from your hand. That's God. And from that time on, I began to grow. I got my own manuscript that I copied, memorized, memorized, memorized. I memorized about most of it. And then I began to have dream and vision. Remember, I never met a Christian yet. Remember, almost 21, didn't meet a Christian yet. And listen to this, day and night, I began to have dreams that I saw two giants fighting. At the beginning, they were fighting so powerfully, I thought I was lucky, looked like Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, you know? <laughs> Kung Fu, you know? <laughs> By the way, I used to really practice Kung Fu hard. Four years, I was, I was Kung Fu major, you know what I mean? <laughs> Man, but now don't worry, be happy, because there is not much Kung with this fool now, amen? <laughs> I'm a fool for Jesus, amen? <laughs> Praise God. By the way, the song that you sang, sister. By the way, the song, the song I, I, I love that very much. I've sang it many times. Of course, not as beautiful as you, but tears in my eyes. And one of our mentors spent 19 years in prison in the cesspool. He spent 19 years in the cesspool for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said that was his favorite song when he was working in the cesspool because he was a preacher. Sometime in the cesspool, he could find a page of the Bible somebody did use as toilet paper. And he would wash them clean and, and memorize the words. But that was his favorite song. We have actually a DVD on that. It's unreal. Yeah, Pastor George Chin. You know, they featured him in the General Assembly in San Antonio at one time. 19 years in prison. It's unbelievable. I have his story documented also. Long story short, the Lord began to show me he was the victor between the two giants. The evil giant was finally knocked down and knocked out. And the victorious one ran towards me and grabbed hold of me and reminded me of one verse. John 15, 16. Don't think you did God a favor by following serving him. No. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Hallelujah. And I have ordained you to go and bear fruit that will remain, that will last. That was the verse he gave me. When he got hold of me, running towards me, he called me by name. Hong Yang, Hong Yang, do not run away from me. I saw his glory and uh, uh, majesty, but I saw something else I didn't see. Because too far away, blood, cuts, and wounds. In other words, he came to me not just as a healer, he came to me as the wounded healer. Not just as a mighty savior, but as a suffering servant. When he was calling me, Hong Yang, Hong Yang, I saw his glory, majesty, but also saw his blood. And I heard him calling me, do not run away from me, for I was wounded for your transgressions, and I was bruised for your iniquities, and by my stripes you are healed, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am Jesus, you've been reading in the Bible, in the manuscript, you copied from the Bible. Not one day or two days, two nights, six days and seven nights. And I finally woke up, I began to cry. Every night I woke up crying. People thought I was demonized, crazy, because I couldn't control myself. But I had the sweetest joy like I never ever knew in over 20 years. Not only that, the last night I heard uh, the voice saying to me, do not run away from Hong Yang, Hong Yang, do not run away from me anymore. Man, suddenly I feel the fear of God. Do you know why there is so much foolishness in churches? It's because they have lost the fear of God. Yeah. When they have lost the fear of God, they are nothing but a bunch of foolishness. And that's what's happening in so many of these uh, churches here in these days. Because they are played by God and they are played by the devil without even knowing it. The Spirit of God already left them and they don't even know it, you know? Because they are playing church and playing God but being played by the devil. Let me tell you this, this is the dangerous. And when the Lord got a hold of me, I began to follow him. I heard him calling me by name. And before I knew it, I was on my knees crying. People laughing at me, but I didn't care. I just began to follow the one thing I found, which I copied in my manuscript. He says, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe also in your heart that God raised him from the dead. I follow those few verses. I copied from Romans chapter 10. 
And the moment I confess with the mouth Jesus Christ, Lord, confess my sin, ask him to forgive me, not even knowing one Christian, American or Chinese, black or white, I was gloriously saved the moment I called upon him. And ever since that day, December 1983, my life has never been the same anymore. My life will never be the same anymore because Jesus touched me and Jesus made the difference in my heart. Hallelujah. Put your hand together. Praise the Lord. He touched me. He touched me. And all the joy that flooded my soul, something happened then and now I know Jesus touched me and made me whole and eight months later August 84 not talking about the next year I met two tongue talkers holy rollers from Cleveland amen <laughs> from Cleveland the Dirksons from Lee College which is not our Lee University they came they began to teach us English and he gave me a Bible both of them really his Bible his mother's Bible. When they gave me a Bible, I didn't know they were given to me. They said, you can have it. My question was, how long could I have it? Have it means borrow in Chinese, not a give. Have doesn't mean give, you know? Man, I went to return the Bible. They said, oh, obviously you don't understand American idiom. I feel like a Chinese idiot, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you don't understand idiom, you feel like a dummy as an idiot, you know? I said, what do you want me to keep a little longer? Copy, copy some more? They said, no, we gave it to you a month ago. Suddenly it dawned on me. They gave me the Bible, and then one verse touched me. That became my guiding light. John 3, 16. For God is so loved that he gave. I said, you can have my son as your Lord. Because they said, when we say you can have it, it means we have given, we gave it to you. Here it came down from my eyes, and John 3, 16 gave me a principle. That is, one can give without loving, but no one can truly love without giving. For God is so loved that he gave. Wow, praise God. And the Lord touched me through the discipleship of the Dirksons. I was filled by the Holy Spirit. And I had no interest in following the Communist Party to be a secretary of the leader. I was called to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ever since, I never look back. That Jesus be before me. The cross before me. And the world behind me. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I have decided. And now before you know it, 30 years, a little over 30 years now. Praise God, since 84, about 30-something now. Listen to this. Not only that, the Spirit of God touched me in a special way. 21 years I had my first Bible. You know, I was 21 when I got my first Bible from the Dirksons. But through their contact, I heard of the underground church. See, I didn't even know any underground church. And through them, I got some connections, and we were made in the underground church. I became a young leader, energetic. We were made among the donkeys for Jesus. For 20 years, we were trained that we were monkeys by evolution because no God, no creation in China. That's atheism. In, in China, sing a song, there has never ever been a God, we will never be a God. Neither is there such a thing as a spirit, for we, are the, we only are the makers, the masters of this world. So for 20 years, I was deceived. I was in five Ds. I was deceived in deception, in deception, in desperation, in depression, in destruction, and headed for destruction. Amen? Because the devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. Absolutely. If the devil wants to destroy you, he will first distract you. If you are distracted, you are not too far from being destroyed. I want you to wake up. Just like on the interstate, you text and drive, you are distracted, accident, in the spiritual highway, much more dangerous. I want to tell you, that the Lord began to use the Dirksen to teach me, train me, filled by the Holy Spirit, and not only that, called me God called me through them to preach the gospel and testify. And many came, and that's why my family came to Christ. And my girlfriend began to come to Christ. Not be married 29 years. Praise God. Amen. God is good. And let me tell you one more story. That through this connection with the underground church, I got to hear foreign groups, holy smugglers. So for 20 years, we have to touch, to touch our monkey tail to make sure we were monkey by evolution. And that's how we were trained. We were monkey by evolution. And later, when, when we became this underground distributor of the Bible, we received secretly. Our nickname was Donkeys for Jesus. No more monkey for Darwin. Amen. No more monkeys of evolution, but donkey for Jesus. Amen. And we helped distribute in one year, receive and distribute over one million Chinese Bibles to the underground churches because of wonderful people like you who gave, who raised their life to bring to China just like you saw in the DVD and this is my story and this is my song and one year later the Turkson saw the passion of the Lord in my heart and it gave me a scholarship and I came to Church God School of Theology you know Theos God Theos but when I presented to the Communist Party because I had to go through them to apply for passport visa all kinds of stuff you know get permission to even apply they all read the word of theology 
Somehow the Holy Spirit blurred their vision from the Diane Sawyer of 2020 to the Community Party of 2010. You know what I mean? And they read the word theology and they all translated as technology. And it immediately allowed me to come to Church God School of Technology in Cleveland, Tennessee. Hallelujah. Now I have the most powerful technology, technology, technology. The only technology that they can deliver so from Satan's hell. And not only that, because they thought I was going to study advanced American high tech, they gave me twenty-seven hundred dollars. I never. That was that was nineteen eighty-five. That nineteen eighty-five twenty-seven hundred dollars is like twenty-seven thousand. You know, inflation. Listen, I never had a seventy dollars to my own name. Twenty-one years old, never had a seven zero. No, two seven zero zero. Two thousand for my shop expenses. They said this is the party decision. How? Why? Because you have glorified the community party by being selected foreigner, giving a scholarship. This is the least we can do as your alma mater. With the hope that one day you finish your technological studies and advancement, you'll come to teach here American technology. Now I got too much technology, they put me in a cage when I went back and now don't let me go back for five years, you know. <laughs> Man. You need to get my newest book, Effective Strategies for Living the Victory. It's called Life Lessons. I have a whole chapter 25. It's 250 pages. Last chapter, I give the detail of my interrogation what the Lord revealed to me in the cage. I call it the cage verse. The cage verse, you'll discover the detail because I don't have the time to tell you. You can get a copy. Be glad to sign a copy. But listen to this, what happened. And the Lord used the dirt to give me the scholarship and the Communist Party wanted me to study technology and give me the money. 2000 for travel expenses, 700 to buy suits and ties and shoes and everything so that I would not appear shabby and poor among American technologists. Amen. In Cleveland, Tennessee, School of Technology. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, you guys didn't even know we have a school of technology, did you? You know, but truly it's God, a pure God. When I told the dark sense what happened, you know, what occurred to me with the community officials, they began to cry. Especially she began to cry. She began to weep because she realized how sovereign God had made a miracle for me. Praise God. And that's how I came to America. Graduated July 85, September 3rd. I was studying in the Church of God School of Technology in Cleveland, Tennessee. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus. Thank God for this School of Technology. Thank God for the Church of God. And thank God for America. Because not only got my master's and even my doctor degree in technology. Amen. Because the Lord began to open door and give me scholarship. And then as I was about to go back to China, guess what happened 25 years ago? Massacre on Tiananmen Square. Some of you still remember tanks and the machine guns. This summer, 25 years ago. Summer 89. And I was finishing my doctor degree in technology then. You know, praise God. God gave me so many opportunities. And in seven years, finished three masters and two doctor degrees. All on scholarships. And I wrote 10 books also. Praise God. And never stopped preaching, teaching all over. You know, praise God. And I didn't see my wife for three years after being married for only three, eight days. Eight days later, I came. Three years later, she finally came. Miracle of God. How she, how she came. She can give you a testimony later. Lady will be getting ready with a Kleenex. You know what I mean? It's just all moving. But let me make a long story short by saying this. Because of the power of the word of God. He opened our heart to him. Opened both families. Now both families get together. It's like 70 some Christians and about a dozen preachers now from both sides. Uh, both sides together. And they multiply and multiply. And we have started thousands of churches and 13 underground Bible schools from no preachers. Now we have over 3,000 preachers. Hallelujah. God is growing the church. And now we are beginning to send them out to other countries. Indonesia, Pakistan, and Thailand. And even several in the most oppressive country in the world. Guess where? North Korea. They couldn't even have a Bible. They can't even have a phone. They can't even have a camera. And they are supposed to be allies from China. You know, allies. But guess what? They memorize the Bible before they go. And they share at the risk of their life, willing to die. Sign. They sign, they sign uh, their, their death sentence, willing to die for Jesus. You need to come and see the song they wrote. Five stanzas. You'll be deeply moved. And the last verse is, I too, Lord, I'm ready. Make me a martyr for you today. A living martyr. I want to be a living martyr for you now. But make me, oh, it's just unbelievable. And the least we can do today is to help them with the most needed thing. Bible, you saw it. From the first DVD to the second DVD. Only five minutes. You saw the hunger, the need. 
And even in our underground Bible schools, not enough Bible, let alone the church. And the conversion, guess what? Even under terrible persecution, torture, imprisonment, and even martyrdom, guess what? 32,000 people are coming to Jesus Christ. That means they need Bibles, and the Bibles are banned and illegal. We need your prayer, need your support to train people, send people, send the Bibles, smuggle, smuggle, smuggle. We have sent hundreds of thousands of Bibles. So you please pray. Anybody interested to talk to me and my wife? But this evening, with pastor's favor, with pastor's favor and blessing, I want to make available this faith promise card. Can I get some helper, my friend? Can my usher friend, can usher come and help me? Give everybody a faith promise. This is my American Express. Don't leave home without it. Amen. Amen. You can see I have been in America for a few years, you know. Amen. But I don't do anything without the permission and the blessing of the bishop. Pastor Thomas, I thank you for the Thank you. Anybody that a pastor Dillard introduces, I have perfect confidence. Because I know Brother Dillard, man of God's heart. Man of God's heart. Amen. He's preached to me a lot of sermons with a lot of lit alliterations, you know, DDDs and FFFs, you know. Yes, I urge him to write a book and publish it, you know. And every weekend I'll tell him to sell some, you know. But once you get this copy, I want you to please help us with the most needed project, Bible. Second most needed Bible school students. Do you know how much you can say? This Bible study Bible is $50. It's a 3,000 page Bible in Christian bookstore, like $50. But we have a missionary price for only $10. And if you give $10, we can make available two copies that will feed average 400 Christians. Average American Christian, one Christian, four Bible. I don't want you to raise your hand because many of you I know will fit that category. Some more than four copies. Preacher like us, more than that. Average American Christian, one Christian, four Bible. But in China, one Bible for 40,000 people. And that's among the population. 900 million have never heard of a Bible. How about among the Christians, especially the 32,000 a day, from less than 1 million to now over 100 million Christians? Guess what? One Bible for 200 Christians. Can you imagine that? And your church can make a difference by supporting the Bible project, even if it's $10 a month. And also the second most needed is the Bible schools. Bible schools, Bible school. We have now over 400 underground uh, students studying in the Bible. Some of the best ones, we even take them out, send them to our seminary in Manila, the Philippines. Much cheaper than the School of Technology in Cleveland. You know that, you know? And you can help sponsor a Bible school student for only $30 a month. $1 a day. I call it D-D-D. Dollar day difference. D-D-D. And if you give a dollar a day, which is just a, enough maybe to buy a little coffee. You can support fully an underground Bible school student. You can come and see. They are willing to die for Jesus. They put their life on the cross. See the song they wrote. To be a martyr, to be a martyr. Lord, I'm ready. Make me a martyr for you today. On the upper right corner, turn with me to the first page, my brothers, sisters. On the upper right corner, everybody got a copy? Who doesn't have it yet? Who doesn't? Everybody got one? If you don't, let me know. Okay? Here, I got it, brother. Don't, don't leave home without it. Amen. I got plenty. On the upper right corner, you have your amount. You can do something today, even if it's a one time. Even if it's $5, they add up together. Some of you can give $50. Some of you can give $30. Some may be $5. Some of the young people may $1. Don't despise the $1. If you give $1 a week, that's $52 for Bibles. And matching fund will make it $104. We'll have a matching fund. One church in North Georgia gave me hundreds of thousands now over the years. Unbelievable. Imagine. And uh, on the upper right corner, on the upper right corner, uh, you have that. On the upper left corner is your prayer request. If you have a, a prayer request, I can pray for you. Please put it down because I want to pray for you before I turn this in right after General Assembly. Because we start at 8.30 tomorrow morning. All week, nonstop, until Friday night. And I'm covering several churches, my wife and I, in South Carolina before we get to Tennessee on Tuesday, August the 4th, I believe. <laughs> Something like that. We're not in Africa, not And in the middle, give us name and address. Your name and address, because this one can give you receipt, tax deductible, every dollar give tax deductible. And then in the lower left corner, besides giving something, even if it's one time on the upper right corner, you can give, uh, you know, if you write a check, make it payable to local church. I want to tell you this. 100% of what you give, 100% will be used for this project. 100%. Not a $1 will be used for administration, for bureaucracy at all. Not a $1. And secondly, I guarantee you that it will be used effectively for the training of leaders and the supplication, supplying of Bibles. 
one time, even if it's a one time, do it by God's grace. And some of you can, but some of you cannot, but you can by faith do it on a monthly basis. In the lower left corner, it said the amount that's selected below will be paid Mark monthly. Is that a weekly, monthly, annually renewal? I know there is no renewal because I've not been here before, but would you consider doing something by marking monthly? Monthly, I'm going to give $5. Monthly, I'm going to give $20. Monthly, I'm going to give 50 Whatever you decide. I told the pastor, I hate manipulation and I hate pressure. I've been manipulated even in fundraising myself. Being, you know, we give to different projects. I hate it. You got to give and feel good about giving. Otherwise, don't bother. Simple. Simple. Amen? But I do not believe in manipulation pressure. I believe in divine conviction. If the Lord has told you something, even if you cannot do it by faith, put it down. You will see God. Test me. He said, test me. Test me. Test me in Malachi. I believe that. He is wanting us to test him as he constantly tests us. Amen? Praise God. And in the lower left corner, I want you to do something by faith. Because it is a faith promise. For without a faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrew 11.6. So faith is given for the purpose of God's pleasure. Because for his pleasure, all things were given. For his pleasure, all things were created. And faith likewise. So faith pleases God. And God prospers the faithful. I am convinced of that. And I'm an example of that. Came with $20 in my pocket. God has multiplied. Now supporting so many underground workers, Bible schools. And even in Ethiopia, even in Congo, we are able to do a contribution to support. Because of wonderful people like you, blessed to be a blessing. You know? So do something, and you can pay by credit card or through local church. Whatever you do. I'm your church god, Fox News. I report, you decide. Yeah, amen. 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 Praise God. I report, you decide. Bold, balanced, and unafraid. Amen. It says, amen. But let me give you the project number. In the lower right corner, please write down in any of the space. In the lower right corner, you have space. Please write down this number. And this is the number your church will have that we can give you credit. And it said 060. Yeah, anywhere in the lower right corner is 060. Let me say it slowly. 060-0036. Very simple. And this is the number we've been using for over 25 years. We became missionary of our church of God 1989. 1989. Graduated with my doctor degree and we've never done anything else but winning thousands of souls for Jesus. Just in one city, God gave me harvest to start many, many underground churches and baptize over 3,000 people in one city in China. And at one time, we had to break ice with ice in the snow on the bank, baptize 2,000 people along the same river in several different points. Do it underground. It's unbelievable. So do something with the project 060-0036. That's our project number since 89. And 100% of what you give, 100% will go for this project of 0600036. And once you fill it out, tear the last page. It's your donor copy, the last page. You keep it as your receipt. And put the white and yellow copy along with whatever you can give. If you want to write a check, make it payable to local church. If you want to give something in cash, even if one time, put it in between the white and yellow. And the pastor will instruct them how to receive. And the church can write one check for Church God World Missions with this 060-0036 on it. May God bless you. And I thank you. Come to the table. Talk to me. Anything I can share with you. Challenge me. I challenge you. And we can be challenged and equipped by the Lord. And if I can serve you in any way, need a prayer, talk to me. I'll pray for you. Right in there, believe in God for healing, for protection, for provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise the Lord together. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Just before service, we were talking and he was mentioning Brother Dillard. He was mentioning Papa Hanks. He said, I've preached two times for Papa Hanks. Once in, in Central Florida. That's when he pastored in Mount Dora. And then once in LaBelle. And you know that after LaBelle, they came back home. And he said, Papa goes here, doesn't he? I said, when Papa's home, Papa goes here. And then he mentioned, um, he mentioned Carl Thomas. I think uh, Carl went with you to China. 
And uh, so we went through that process. He says, and then there was this other guy. He said, another pastor, Church of God pastor. He pastors in Okeechobee. Well, that got my attention. He says, uh, Pastor Mark Smith. And I stopped him and I said, you won't believe this. I said, but my wife and Pastor Mark Smith are brothers and sisters. And so uh, we're going to get to be able to join that together tonight. Isn't it a small world that we live in? Amen. And uh, so what a great day it has been. In the Lord let me give a little bit of instruction to just make sure you're very clear whatever you're giving today cash or check today needs to be written in the top right hand side okay whatever you're giving futuristically whatever your faith pledge is needs to be recorded in the big bold black box okay that way we can keep the two separate make sure your name is on there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the usher stand just inside of the uh, double doors on your way out you can drop them off there the way you can uh, go by the display table look at the pictures hear all the stories things of that nature and because uh, he said pastor no pressure we want to make this as easy as we can but everything we give will go to help with some Bibles and and uh, we take for granted we can go to the Bible bookstore the other Saturday I wanted a new Bible why pastor did you wear out the other 15 in your office no I just wanted another black one that matched my my tablet case that was the only reason so what did I do about seven o'clock that afternoon I went to the Bible bookstore and I wanted it I wanted it for that next Sunday so I went that night and there was hundreds of Bibles to choose from we really don't understand what it's like not having the Word of God I can help somebody tonight it'd be a great thing and I believe heaven would be pleased amen amen yes yes many countries just like China wow wow whole families and we take it for granted church we need to hide the word of God in our heart amen that we might not sin against the Lord amen stand with me if you will we're going to pray while you're standing and preparing I'm going to ask the Lord to direct you let me say it again, it has been great to have Brother and Sister Walker with us. They were with us last weekend all through camp meeting. Uh, she got touched this week in camp meeting. They sang Friday night, and, and I don't know what their schedule is. I'm not sure if you're even next Sunday or not. I'm not sure where you're traveling. they got to go home at some point. I think they could stay through next Sunday morning, then he could just drive all night back to the house. Amen. That's what he did to get here all 18, 19 hours of it. And uh, so we may not get to see them in a setting like this. Their kids will be in youth camp uh, this week with ours, and, uh, and they'll be around. But I, we may not get to see them in a Sunday setting. Can you let them know how much you've enjoyed having them with us? Thank you so much. And uh, just connected with them several years ago. I uh, mentioned Pastor Mike and his church this morning. They had homecoming. Brother Diller was there, celebrated 90 years of ministry. And while we were not there with them this morning, this church has had a part in that for almost two years now. And we're thankful for what God's doing over at Spirit Life. And uh, Alyssa's with us tonight. Alyssa uh, is going to be going to youth camp tomorrow with, uh, with our group. Uh, she's heard. She's heard Dr. Han Yang before. You've been in Samoset. Dr. Graham Chansey, or Brother Graham Chansey, uh, she attends. She attends his church, and so she knew you were coming. She says, oh, I think you'll have a good time with him. So uh, glad to have Alyssa in service with us tonight. Her daddy dropped her off. Now, I'll, te I'll tell on her. And um, back when we were youth pastors in Palmetto 12 years ago, her and her brother were there. They were not old enough to be in our youth group. Uh, and I told her that I said, I remember your brother, but I don't remember you. They were like four and six uh, back 12 years ago. But we're delighted to have her with us tonight. She'll be staying with us, headed to youth camp tomorrow. Young people going to youth camp, get all you can get this week. Let God fill you up to overflowing. Amen. For those that are going to the assembly, we're looking forward to seeing you there. Again, the ushers will serve you on the way out. Please uh, make sure, even if you're not responding today, please make sure that you turn your forms in. We want to be good stewards of what the Lord has given. And uh, I'm thankful that you have a degree in technology from Lee University. Amen. What a wonderful story. Let us pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the man of God. Thank you for the time we've had in your house tonight. I just pray, God, as we have taken on just tonight this opportunity to hear the message and to hear the need, I pray, God, that there'll be families, there'll be individuals from our local church that says, I can respond to this need to help others receive the Word of God in print, receive things that we take for granted, receive the Word of God in print form, Lord, that we have numerous ones of. And I pray that all that is given 
for this project tonight. God will help somebody come to know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. That when we get to heaven, God, you will give us the privilege of meeting those individuals that we've been a part of salvation in their life because of an offering that was given. And we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. Shake